Somebody said to me yesterday, oh, you got new hair. And I said, no, it's the same hair, just a slightly different color. <laughs> I went to the hairdresser the other day and I said, let's do something different. Let's, let's, let's jazz up a little bit maybe for the holidays. How about some low lights? And so we did that. And everybody was noticing, so I just thought I'd bring it to your attention <laughs> in case you didn't want to say something. Anyway, this is not about my hair. This is about a choice that I made to do something different. And that's what I want to encourage you to do today, to create a new pattern. Maybe it's a new hairstyle, new color, new way of doing something. For the past 20 months, we have been pushed into doing things differently in many, many ways, yes? And we don't like it a lot of times. Most people don't like change, especially change that they have not created themselves. So I'm asking you today to consider giving your power and energy to creating for yourself a new pattern in some way. Why a new pattern and why now? Well, this year is going to be over in less than six weeks. Yeah, that's coming from me who said, don't take my last three days of summer away. <laughs> but I'm very cognizant of, you know, this, what's, what's coming? A brand new year. And it's a great opportunity to create a new pattern for your life. To intentionally choose what you might want to do differently. We don't need to wait until a new year to set... Um, Res resolutions, goals, most of those fail anyway. We can start now. We can start to think about it now and prepare in advance. Now, if you would like your 2022 to be exactly like 2021 was for you, you don't need anything from this talk today. So you can, you know, leave if you'd like. No. Um, but the fact is, we cannot live the same way that we did even yesterday. Because even if we change ourselves, we can't change other people or other things that are happening around the world. But that's a good thing. Because that means that we know that we can be focusing our energy on ourselves the only thing we really have any power to change. And we can create a new way of being. So I was thinking about it and I thought, you know what, God did that. Uh, in the Hebrew scriptures that I read to, from today, um, God spoke through angels and prophets and in dreams really often. And although that occurred still in the New Testament or the Christian scripture, things were very different in the way God communicated because often did so through Jesus, a human form, God incarnate here on the earth. So if God can change the way that things are done, then perhaps we can too. Charles Fillmore, our co-founder in Unity, says the divine incarnation of Jesus is the divine pattern for all who are seeking the Christ way of life. So what is this Christ way? And Jesus lived on this earth a long, long time ago. How can we make anything new when it comes to being Christ-like? It's simple. We call Jesus our way shower or our teacher. So if Jesus was showing us the way to live a connected spiritual life while living in human form on an earth where things were happening all around us that were out of our control, and if he was showing us the way to do that, then to follow that, to be more Christ-like, would be 
really simple. We could do what he did. We could practice kindness and patience and empathy. We could make connections. We could take time to go apart, to be with ourselves in our higher consciousness. We could take time to recognize that whether we're intending it or not, we are role models for one another. We are being seen and we are being heard. May Rowland was the director of Silent Unity for 55 years. How's that for a long career? And someone asked her one time, do you believe that anyone can change the pattern of his life through right thinking? Now, I'm thinking that if somebody asked her this, they're pray probably praying for somebody that they're trying to change because <laughs> they love them so much and they know what's right for them and they want to change them, right? Do you really think he can ever change? And can he really change by just changing his thinking? And May said, yes, anyone can change. The whole pattern of your life can change through the use of positive, constructive thinking. Constructive, positive. That means intentional thinking. That doesn't mean that thoughts piled upon thoughts and I couldn't even tell you what I was thinking right now because there's so many thoughts going through my head. That means pausing long enough to intentionally think about what you're thinking about. And May says, the whole pattern of life can change if we do this. Now, I'm not suggesting that any one of us would need to change our whole pattern of life. However, if we're honest with ourselves, there might be. I found an interesting article called Recognizing Our Patterns and Learning How to Change Them. It was written by Maria Christina McDonald. And in it, she said, life has a funny way of teaching us lessons. When there is something you need to learn, something that you need to work on, the same situation will continue to repeat itself until you either learn your lesson or find a healthy way of dealing with the particular issue. Now, I hear people say all the time, why do I keep experiencing the same thing? And as a life coach, oftentimes it was about careers and relationships. Like, I'm, I'm with a different person now, but I'm experiencing the same kind of trouble in this relationship as I was in the last one. Why do things always end up this way for me? If you ever find that happening to you, whether in relationships, at your work, with your finances in your health, you feel like you're doing things differently, but you're getting the same results, you're likely stuck in a pattern, an old pattern, a pattern that you've probably outgrown, but you won't recognize it because you're in it. You might be being shown something that's yours to learn or change. Perhaps it's a lesson in humility or gratitude or empowerment or vulnerability. But a good question to ask yourself if you're feeling like, why does this keep happening to me, is what's my part in this? And when you look at your patterns, you can find your lesson. McDonald says, I found that when I'm involved in a pattern, my emotions run a bit stronger, kind of like a warning from my subconscious mind to pay attention to what is happening. She said, oftentimes I don't recognize that I'm in a pattern until I'm out of it. <laughs> There's a saying that says it's hard to see the picture when you're in the frame. I like that. And we all know the saying, hindsight is 20-20, right? 
ah, now I can see it. But oftentimes we see it and then we think it's too late, but it's not too late. What we want to do is we want to be alert. We want to be present in each now moment. We want to ask ourselves, what's my part in this? How can I change this situation? The answer is always going to be a version of the same. Change yourself. That's the only thing you have power over anyway. And when we're thinking about changing our pattern or our way of being, it would be very beneficial if we could connect with the higher power and allow it to open those doors to the kingdom to us, allow new ideas to come in. So the holidays are upon us, yes? Next week, it'll be post-Thanksgiving when I stand here. That's the first one. And they come quickly. And if you're like many people, holidays are filled with traditions, family events, lots of expectations. Sometimes it can lead to pressure and stress. What if we decided to change that for the holidays? Last year, a lot of us were kind of forced to do something different. This year, many are gathering more. And you can decide how you would like to change. Turn the stripes into plaids and the polka dots into flowers. A different pattern. What if there were no have tos or shoulds around the holidays? What if you could experience freedom and peace throughout the holiday season? You can, if you're willing to change. What if this year you decided to do less instead of figuring out how to cram more into every day? Try doing less. Less shopping, less cooking, less wrapping, less traveling. What if you decided that whether you were with them in person or connecting through other ways that you would really take the time to engage with your loved ones, to listen with interest, to get to know them better. What if you simply decided that you were going to smile more through the holiday season at everybody? even if you're wearing a mask, because you can tell when somebody's smiling behind a mask. Are you willing to dump the parts that don't work, to release them, even if they've been a holiday tradition for a long, long time? I was thinking about that, and I thought, you know, the great thing about an annual event is it comes around every year. So every year, I have an opportunity to do something different, to change the pattern. It's really important here to remember, though, that I cannot change anybody else's pattern for them. Okay. If we can announce that we're going to make a change and stand in it, just thought of that line from the, the prayer that we say at the beginning of service, as we take our next brave steps in life, it might feel really brave to tell your family members that you want to change this year. Well, a friend of mine, Lydia, did that a few years ago, several years ago now. Um, her family was known to give extravagant, extravagant gifts, and, and they gave to everybody in the family. And Lydia said, I am so tired of doing all this shopping and wrapping and trying to find the perfect gift for everybody. And so she decided that that year she was going to give handmade gifts. And Lydia was really great at crocheting. So she made crocheted gifts for all of her family. And she told them in advance that was what she was going to do. And one of her sisters said, well, why should I spend a lot of money on you and go through all the trouble of if you're just going to give me something that you made? And Lydia was really hurt. But she stuck with it. And within a couple of years, everybody in the family had agreed 
to exchange handmade or crafted items for Christmas. And if they weren't crafty people or didn't have a particular talent, they shopped craft stores. And everybody loved it. Took off a lot of pressure. It meant more. And then there's my friend Mark. Mark was a young married man, had two children. Uh, his wife's family lived real close to them, but his own parents lived a two-hour drive away. So on Christmas Eve, they would spend the evening with her family and have a great time. On Christmas morning, they would wake up and they would have their own little foursome family there, seeing what Santa brought and exchanging gifts with each other, and then quick, quick, had to jump in the car and take the two-hour drive to Grandma and Grandpa's house. And by the time they got there, they were exhausted, and they had dinner, and they exchanged more gifts, and the kids just wanted to be at home playing with the things that they had gotten new for Christmas, and it was exhausting. And so finally, Mark got brave enough to say, we need to change this pattern. It doesn't feel good. So he told his parents that he would like to celebrate Christmas with them the weekend after Christmas. And then he and his family would come and stay for the whole weekend. Well, his parents were really upset about that. Mark was their only child. It would mean that they were alone on Christmas Day. But Mark stood his ground. And the first year that they did that, they had such a wonderful time. They had the whole weekend together, not just one quick visit and throwing gifts at each other and then getting back on the highway to go home. But it took somebody who was willing to change the pattern to not stick to the what I have to do or what I should do or what they expect me to do. Everything, everything we do, we do by choice. He was choosing to drive the two hours to his parents' house, even though he didn't like it. And as soon as he determined that he wanted to make a new choice, everything changed. Choice empowers us. Change can be wonderful. Choice empowers me. Say that with me. Choice empowers me. And guess what? I don't need anybody to agree with me when I make a choice. So here are some things that I, I gathered that might help you to make some healthy changes in your patterns. And it's all really about honoring yourself. Ask for what you want or need. Say no without guilt. And yes because you want to, not out of obligation or to please others. Give yourself permission to go late, leave early, or totally skip an event that others are expecting you to be at. This is how you will take care of yourself, physically, emotionally, spiritually. And you know how to do that. Sometimes it means slowing down a bit. This time of year feels like a real hurry up time of year. Don't hurry up. Slow down. Take notice. And when you see how making a shift in your patterns feels, you might just want to continue it into the new year. Next Sunday, the Advent season begins. Advent is a time of rebirth, renewal, new life, new beginnings. So if you want to be prepared to enjoy this holiday season and be present in each now moment, whether you're shopping, cooking, wrapping, chilling out, caroling, entertaining, writing cards, watching holiday movies, drinking eggnog, whatever it is that you choose to do, be present in it. 
Create a new pattern. Be present with your higher power. It will make a way in the wilderness, free you from your old disempowering thoughts and ways of being, and open the doors of the kingdom of heaven to you. I see and I acknowledge the Christ in you. I see the pattern of your being. I see the power in you to change that. Make choices that honor the wholeness of you. And be present now. Namaste.